The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship here at the Strata of the Community Church. Welcome to you if you are worshiping with us for the first time. Welcome to you if you worship with us all the time. Welcome to you if you are worshiping with us here in person. And welcome if you are worshiping with us online. Welcome to you who are of great faith and who are of no faith. Welcome to you who are gay or straight or somewhere in between. Welcome to you, no matter your race, no matter your social status. Welcome to you, no matter what. I am the Reverend Wesley Kahn, pastor of this faithful church, the church that strives to follow God's spirit wherever it goes. We are worshiping together inside today thanks to the hard work of our deacons and our church council who developed our re-entry plan and guidelines. The details of this plan and the guidelines can be found on our church website, stratumchurch.org. You can also find a copy of these guidelines in the rear of the church in the narthex. We will continue to record our services and make them available on YouTube. The deacons met this past week to revise our guidelines, and I want to highlight just a few of these revisions now. Face coverings are required for unvaccinated people and optional for vaccinated people. You'll notice that our pews are sectioned off, and we have done this to accommodate unmasked congregational singing. So please sit only in those pews that are um, unroped at this time. We continue to have the offering plate in the rear of the center aisle. You may, you may place your offering in the plate as you enter. Um, you can also use the QR code found in the announcement portion of our bulletin if you wish to give online. The deacons will continue to meet monthly to assess our re-entry guidelines based on the latest coronavirus information and data. Are you curious about what I have been up to? Do you have questions about Sunday's sermon? Would you like to share something with me that needs some prayer? You are invited to take advantage of my office hours, which are from 9 to 1 p.m. here at the church every Monday and Wednesday. And if you can't make that, there is a special option available Tuesday afternoons from 12.30 to 2 p.m. And these are walk and talk office hours. You can simply sign up for a time slot on the church's website to meet me at the public parking lot in Exeter for a conversation and perambulation around the town. And if neither of these options work, don't hesitate to reach out to me and we will find something that works for both of our schedules. Are there any other announcements at this time? Seeing none, let us enter into our time of worship, preparing our hearts and minds as we let the prelude wash over us.
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please uh, stand and join for the call, of, call to worship. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. God has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Everyone whose hearts and hands wish to know God's goodness and those who seek out what is true, they will receive God's blessing and know the promise of their salvation. Open wide the doors of the sanctuary, that the King of glory be in our hearts. Let us lift our voices in song by singing to him all people that on earth do dwell found on page 7 of the New Century Journal. said to his disciples, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And, also with you. and as we get ready to share that peace of Christ with one another, we will do so safely with a wave, a smile, a peace sign, a bow, um, whatever is comfortable. Go and share peace with your neighbor. 
Our Old Testament lesson is the 24th Psalm. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. In our New Testament lesson is from the first chapter of Ephesians, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the, in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time. To gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, the Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were, were marked with a seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The title of my sermon this morning is A New Creation. A New Creation. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A few weeks ago, the intercom in my apartment rang. Having recently moved, I was a little confused as to who would be making a surprise visit. When I answered, I found the kind voice of a neighbor who informed me she had recently received a piece of my mail. She said, this envelope looks important and I wanted to make sure you get it. Today, we have read from someone else's mail. In fact, many of the books in the New Testament are essentially mail that was sent to someone else and has now ended up in our Bible. The letter to the Romans, the letter to the Colossians, the first letter of Paul to Timothy, and the list goes on. Page through the very back of your Bible, and you can see the many letters that are found now in our scripture. 
The complete name of Ephesians, from which we've just read, is the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Paul being the Apostle Paul, and the Ephesians being the people of Ephesus, which was a bustling city at the center of the worship of Greek and Roman gods in the ancient world. The city whose ruins are an attraction for tourists today. Many of Paul's letters were written to address specific topics, events, crises, or a specific church. The letter to the Ephesians, however, stands out because it is addressing <coughs> many churches. When reading the numerous letters found in the New Testament, it is helpful to keep these things in mind, knowing that the letter was addressed to people and churches in different places and in different times gives us some context for meaning. The letter to the Ephesians among contemporary progressive Christians doesn't have the greatest reception. In fact, this letter isn't alone in its unpopularity. Ephesians, along with the book of Timothy, contains passages that are used to oppress and suppress women. These letters are infamously misinterpreted to endorse misogyny. And if there is anything that Jesus has taught us, it's that scripture is not meant to batter or to bludgeon. So let's open up this envelope and read the letter to the Ephesians. And when we open up the letter and start to read, we will find the passage that Al read so wonderfully for us this morning. Paul wrote this letter in a pattern of Greek letter writing, which starts with a very brief reading, followed by a word of thanksgiving for the recipients of the letter. Paul, however, does something different. He expands this thanksgiving part to a paragraph-long poem of thanksgiving and praise to God. And that's what we've heard this morning. Now, if you thought this passage was a little choppy and hard to follow, try taking a look at it in the Greek, because this passage that we read is one long, confusing sentence in the Greek that gets translated into many complex sentences in English. Now, in Paul's poetic praise to God, he told the Ephesians that God has brought together all of creation into one family and formed a new humanity through Christ. He stressed to the Gentile, the non-Jewish readers, that they are adopted into God's chosen family. That all people and all of creation are predestined for God's love. As Paul put it in his letter, it's God's plan to gather up all things in heaven and on earth. And God's will is the love that we find in Jesus. Because Christ, God and humanity, heaven and earth, are united into a new creation. And this new creation is under the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you can't tell, Paul likes to get a little philosophical in his writings. And according to this letter and others, all people in the new creation are made in the image of love. But what does this new creation look like? Are we a part of this new creation? Was this new creation arrangement meant only for the Ephesians, the people to whom the letter is addressed? Paul writes on and 
tells us that this new creation, it has a oneness to it. He says there is one God, one spirit, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. Now, this oneness has nothing to do with uniformity. Paul is clear about this in not only Ephesians, but in his other letters, like the one to the Galatians. Paul, to his letter to the Ephesians, tells them and tells us that difference and diversity abound in the new creation. He said that some in this new creation are preachers and teachers, others still are apostles and prophets, that differences are gifts from God. Now, the new creation is still different with Christ, so much so that to be the new creation is to be like Christ. Paul wrote that in the new creation, truth is spoken instead of lies. Peace is the key to resolving conflict. Generosity replaces theft. Words of encouragement replace gossip. Forgiveness is sought instead of revenge. And self-control is prized over greed. What Paul's describing sounds a bit idealistic, utopian, or perhaps heavenly. A place where our differences are not a source of derision, but are the very fabric that reveals God's goodness. The endorsement of truth, peace, generosity, encouragement, self-control, these things are not lofty ideals in the new creation. These are everyday lived principles. Here's the thing about this new creation. It's already been created. According to Paul, we are a part of it. You are a part of it right now. I am a part of it right here. We are God's new creation. We are people who follow the way of Christ. When we see difference, we see another expression of God's goodness. We seek truth and embrace it. We are generous with our lives and money. We, in conflict, endorse peace. Our words are filled with encouragement and not gossip, and forgiveness is our way forward. If this doesn't sound like us, then I suppose Paul's letter has ended up in the right place. It's clear that the people in, Ephes in Ephesus needed this letter to help them remember who they were as followers of Christ. And over time, the early Christians knew that they needed a piece of mail because when they doubted and forgot who they were, they could read this letter. Now there are some letters that we hang on to because of who wrote them, or what they have to say, or how they made us feel. And it may be strange to consider someone else's mail in our Bible, but to paraphrase my neighbor, it's clear that this letter is important, and we need to make sure we get it. Amen. Let us be a part of this new creation and sing together the hymn, Creator God, a Creating Still, found on page 278 of your New Century video. Please stand as you are able.
the signs of God's Spirit among us is when we elevate one another in prayer. And God's Spirit is surely among us now. So let us bring ourselves and our world together to God in prayer. As we enter into a time of prayer, I invite anyone who has a prayer that they would like to lift up to do so now with the help of our deacons. Sydney. Prayers for Sue Hunter. Let us be together in prayer. Holy God, you shaped every wonder of creation. All that moves on land, flies through the sky and swims in the sea. Fill us with the joy you have for all that you have made. Hear us when we praise your name. Give thanks for your wondrous acts and cry out for your help. Out of love and by your Christ, you have made us to be a new creation. Guide us that we would flourish and follow in the pattern of life given to us in the person of Jesus. God of grace, from you we, we receive endless blessings. Bless now those places in your creation that are in need of peace. Cast your goodwill on the people of Afghanistan and in Haiti, where your people are left in turmoil at the assassination of their president. Rescue peoples and nations from the spread and surge of the coronavirus. Give us all, your children, a willingness to regard our diversity as the blessing that you intended and guide our hands to make our swords into plowshares. Son of God, in your life you have given us truth and showed us the way of life. As you care for the storm toss, care for those in the path of Tropical Storm Elsa, and you give power to us all to love and serve our neighbors who are in harm's way. Give comfort to those who mourn the many who have died in the collapse of the Miami apartment building. And bless those search and rescue workers on the scene. Look with favor on your people who are among us in pain, fear, and distress. Give hope to the hopeless and pour out your healing spirit on our hospitals and all who care for them. Transforming God, by your love you have brought us together to be your family, a new creation. We pray for your family, your church here in Stratum. Pour out your spirit on us, that we would continue to be a channel of grace and forgiveness. That we would witness to justice, be committed to hospitality, and carry out acts of compassion. Make us to see anew each day the beauty of your diversity around us, in language, in skin color, in shape, in size, and in gender and in all the ways you, O oh God, reveal yourself to us. Steadfast Lord, you are at every smile on our face and in every tear that falls from our eyes. Though you are with us always, we pray your presence 
to be especially Sioux yes. Hunter with the Brown and Perry O'Shea families, with the Scammon family, with Robin, Dottie, Jennifer, Cheryl, and Sarah. Living and loving God, we ask all these things in the name of your Christ, who with the Holy Spirit is among us still. Amen. The psalmist tells us to make known what God has done in our lives, to tell of the way that God's love is working in and around us. How have you noticed God's love in your life? At this time, you are invited to share a word of thanksgiving and joy, and to give a thankful dollar as an expression of our gratitude. Kindly follow the deacon as we offer our thank offering this morning. Just grateful to be back here. Um, this is a church that I was in for 40 years and retired from in 2007, unsuccessfully, obviously. <laughs> but this, I'm just grateful to be here in the sanctuary again. In early 2020, there was no doubt. Everything closed. We were isolated. There was no choice. We had to adapt. This adapting to coming back is a process that's a lot more complicated and I'm grateful for the patience that people have had for going through this process together. It is right to give God thanks and praise. And we have one more thank offering. Maybe two. I thought I saw another dollar back there. We'd just like to give thanks to a new voice from God in our community who will continue to open our eyes and our ears to the wonders of our Creator. Thank you. Amen. So amen to all those wonderful um, statements. Appreciate that. And I am very grateful to God for 35 years of marriage that we celebrated at the end of June, and um, uh, um, it's very grateful. <laughs> Gracious God, from your open hands we have received much. Receive now from our open hands the gifts of your beloved people. Keep in love all those who are private and guard all people and purposes for which it has been given. Let us grow in compassion, in mercy, and longing for justice and love. 
just as Christ loved us. Let us lift our voices together in singing our closing hymn, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing, found on page 459 of your hymn. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. 